Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. It's the night before Christmas. Margaret and Lisa are going home for the holidays. But don't bother to wish them Merry Christmas. Their future isn't going that far. Let's find a compartment with our people. Well now, look who's here. You can say to yourself, it's only a movie. But it won't help this time. And don't waste time looking for an ending you can live with. I think you should take them right off, dear. Or we'll never see you little monkey. No! Let her do it by herself! Come on, you bitch! What are you waiting for? <laughs> Your ticket takes you one stop beyond the end of the line. The last stop on the night train. Every seat in this theater becomes a coach seat to hell. And if you're in one, you'll feel it. Let's do it another, huh? You can say to yourself, it's only a movie. But it won't help. You'll know you've been closer to the last stop than any living soul would want to be. Hey, we'll only cut her a little. He'll see you'll love it once your virginity's gone. You know, I was a flower this way. Maybe this is too close. The last stop on the night train. And welcome back. So, here we go. This is disc number one in the Italian collection, released by 88 Films. We're looking at... Night Train Murders, a.k.a. Ultimo Treno della Notte, um, or Last Stop on the Night Train, and like I say, a, bit, a million other names, you will see them all in the show notes, all listed out, tons and tons and tons of, uh, of titles. This one is technically a Christmas movie, although I will say up front, if you want to have a happy Christmas with your family and friends, don't watch this movie. Um, this one is famously... Famously on the video nasties list, it was banned for approximately a year before it was repealed um, and, and allowed uh, general release, but wasn't actually released uncut in the UK until I believe about 2008. I think Shameless originally put this out on DVD uh, and then 88 Films acquired the rights for Blu-ray distribution and then they put the movie out. I think that's what happened. Um, the internet is a bit sketchy on details, but I do remember this being part of the, the Shameless series 
on DVD. Shameless is another company that do a ton of restorations in the, the, the Italian uh, genre cinema. Specifically on DVD first and they've recently moved over to Blu-rays and by the recording on this date, 25th February 2018, I think they've put out about six or seven Blu-ray titles but certainly they lost the rights to this movie out to 88 films. If you're going to create an Italian series, an Italian collection, the fucking balls on you to use this movie to kick things off. Now, like I said um, up front, it's a kind of loose sort of remake of uh, Last House on the Left. Um, I would say this is a far gnarlier movie than Last House. Now, I know people listen to this as like, oh, I can't believe Duncan said that, you know, but I do, I genuinely do. Um, I have my issues with The Last House on the Left. I think it's a phenomenal piece of exploitation cinema. I think tonally it's a bit weird. And I think sometimes the tone has a counter effect to my overall love of the movie. I still think it's an incredible movie that really does set the benchmark for a decade of very, very, very hard to watch genre cinema. The thing about... Um, you know, the Night Train Murders is Aldo Lado is maybe about three or four movies into his career at this point and visually is a stunning director. Like, a lot of these Italian directors were doing so many different genres of cinema. They just jumped from job to job and as a result, I think it gave them a better, better appreciation for how to tell stories and they had a wide selection of cinematographers out there at their beck and call and as such you get some wonderful cinematography. This movie looks beautiful um, which is almost in stark juxtaposition to the content. So uh, let's give you some information listed on the IMDb's uh, for this movie. Ultimo Trena della Notte is its original Italian name. Uh, excuse my uncouth Scottish tongue. And like I said before, it is directed by Aldo Lado, stars Flavio Bucci, Machia Merrill, Gianfranco De Grassi, Enrico Maria Salerno, Maria Berti, Franco Fabrizi, Irene Miracle, uh, and Laura Delangelo. Um, the synopsis for this one, brief on IMDb, which is good because we're going to do a bit of talking about what happens in this movie. It's a pair of psychotic hoodlums and their equally demented nymphomaniac women terrorise two young girls on a train trip from Germany to Italy. And that is kind of what happens. There's a bit more in the subtext of the movie, but superficially speaking, it really is about these two kind of, it calls them psychotic hoodlums. I would say they are thugs who are given the right push and the right direction by a woman who is obsessed with sex, aka nymphomaniac, and that push starts to put them on a road where none of them are prepared for it and the, the, the cause and effect, what happens afterwards, leaves them all more than just a little bit scarred in one way or another. So we have these two innocent girls, very, very sweet innocent girls who, um, I mean, at least one of them is revealed as being a virgin, uh, are taking the train from Germany back home to uh, one of their very rich parents. And it's worth saying this because there is a, there is this kind of subtext here about wealth um versus the poor, uh, inequality, um, there is like a nod at the church to an extent and um, how society's rich prey on the poor. Um, it's no, you could say no coincidence that the nymphomaniac woman appears to be affluent uh, and from money and then very quickly assumes control of these two maybe less educated thugs and starts dictating terms and direction for the violence which escalates beyond their their kind of very petty crimes that we see at the start of this movie where it's vandalism against a woman's fur coat um, or robbing a Santa 
on the street who is collecting money for you would assume charity but or, or even sneaking on the train to an extent stealing food all of it is kind of pettier uh, in the in the grand scheme of things until they they, they meet up with the, the the psychotic woman but yeah so these two girls are on this train trip and um, it's a very busy train it's a lot of issues with trains traveling and uh, and they're all crammed in and this is where they first come across these two del delinquent men um and you can tell straight away there's something quite off about them they are bullshy um very uh, very near quite rapey actually and these two girls being concerned start to to move away and the the guys themselves have the the run of the train so to speak and one of them ends up interacting with the woman who um I think at first feels that she is threatened and then uses sex as a weapon to control the guy, which she duly does. And from that point, she kind of becomes the ringleader and um, ultimately this leads them to to uh, accost the two girls in a different train carriage. And that's where things get pretty fucking grim. This movie is one of... Very few movies I can say hand on heart actually are displeasing or unpleasant to a point where I feel genuinely uncomfortable watching the movie. Um, and that's not to say that I don't enjoy the movie. I think the movie's an incredible bit of work. But I think the setup and some of what the movie chooses to do in the telling of the story is, is grim to a point of... of you know, it almost turns me off. Um, Last House on the Left to me has a couple of iconic moments um, where I'm just like, it, it kind of breaks my brain watching it and, and really does bum me out. Uh, and all of them are at the start of the episode, in fairness, and most of them exist on the train in this movie. Um, when you watch ha Last House on the Left, the, the, the forcing of a, of a girl to urinate on herself, um, or, or a woman being raped and then climbing into the water to kind of almost wash herself um, and ultimately ultimately being murdered by these criminals who, for the most part, don't appear to show the, the shock and minor remorse that exists on uh, the Night Train murders. In the case of this movie here... Um, a kind of perverted older bystander is forced into the cabin and then made to rape one of the girls. Um, the second girl is forced to remove her underwear and then is stabbed in the vagina with a with a knife, which ultimately causes her to bleed out and die, which they claim is by accident, but is this further escalation of the line, we want to see what's between your legs and then ultimately to violate her with a knife. Is hard to watch, even considering you see very little, is an incredibly uncomfortable scene to watch. The girl that's raped by the older man um, physically throws herself off the train and to her death to get away from, from the gang. The powerfulness of that scene, I think to me, speaks to why this movie is quite traumatic to watch. Um, Given the choice, she would rather she would rather do that than you know, you know, than face these these attackers. Um, when they see how far they have went, ultimately they clean up the the crime scene and try to act as if nothing has happened, as if this is one of these unfortunate since, uh, incidents that just happens to have when you when you bump into strangers on a train. Um, but very much like the last house on the left, uh, they end up in a small town. And they ultimately are picked up by the parents of one of the murdered girls who take them back to their chateau. Um, and, you know, the, the one of them is a doctor who works on the, the, the nymphomaniac woman who has injured herself. And while we're there, we hear these stories coming out about, you know, an incident on a train, these dead girls, and ultimately up to the point where they, they announce that, you know, the girl 
One of the girls that is dead is their daughter. You hear it over the radio. Um, the old man who was forced to rape the younger woman, who just gets off scot-free in this movie. Just, you know, he just fucks off a train and just, you know, reports it anonymously to the police, which is one of the many reasons this movie, I think, is so vulgar at times. Um, because there are certain people that take part that don't get comeuppance. Mostly in movies that the bad people face some sort of judgement or some sort of wrath or some sort of penalty for their actions. There are two characters in this movie that don't and the old man is one of them. He phones in and says, you know, I know who killed these these girls. Um, look for a, a woman in her 30s with blonde hair and she's accompanied by two kind of thuggish men. And when that goes out over the radio, the, the doctor father realises that these are the people behind it. He goes to attack the woman who uses uses the best skills that she has of saying, Oh, you know, they, they threatened me. And look at me, I'm, you know, this, this aristocratic woman. I couldn't be involved with this. Look at them, they're thugs. It's them that are involved. And she goes on to, to, to comfort the weeping mother of this you of this this child has been butchered um, she comforts them and then watches as the two assailants who she has spurred on to these violent rapey killing crimes to be murdered that she even helps make sure one of them doesn't get a chance to point the finger at her and ultimately this movie ends with the old man rapist not facing judgment and the woman being let off with everything the nymphomaniac woman does not base judgment. Now, interspersed in this movie, we have, like I say, some subtext which looks at wealth versus poverty, um, how society sets them up, you know, the, the, the kind of cause and effect of fascism, you know, Italy having been through a massive period of fascism uh, under Mussolini. And those after effects kind of trundle through quite a lot of the movies, actually, in the 60s and 70s. Um, and the Italian output, because you've got a lot of these directors who lived through that, who are still kind of nodding to that in their stories, a lot of writers that lived through it as well, um, that, that make reference to these things, and all that exists on this train journey. This is essentially a last house on the left on a train, for all intents and purposes. But I think Aldo Lado gives it, lifts it a bit more and gives it a bit more level of authenticity, which ultimately makes the movie more sinister and I think more biting in its in its tone. I think you have some wonderful performances in this movie, like truly phenomenal performances in this movie. When you're looking at someone like Flavio Bucci, who plays Blackie in the movie, or Machia Mero, who's the lady on the train, the nymphomaniac, who is genuinely a fucked up, horrible, narcissistic, evil character um, and Curly played by Gianfranco De Grassi you have these three characters who I think fit the ar kind of archetypes of the characters from Last House on the Left but just have slight twists that make them like Flavio Bucci's character of Blackie I think how to word this, is charming in his own way. You know, he's kind of roguish, kind of lovable sort of smile, but he's a, he's a fucking fucked up character. Um, Curly is the most simple of the three. He carries this harmonica, uh, which plays this score, uh, which is, is worth saying in itself, this, this movie, because Aldo Lado had a kind of a long-standing partnership with uh, Ennio Morricone, who who scores this movie? So the score is fucking phenomenal. But you get this this kind of almost this play on the man with the harmonica uh, theme that uh, Morricone did for the spaghetti western movies. You get that in this movie, and Curly's character plays the harmonica whilst on the train, and this almost signals as a recurring motif of music when they are close. And when you hear that music, you genuinely know something bad's going to fucking happen. Um, and then like I say you have the lady on the train herself played by Machia Mero who is this repulsive character and the three of them 
I just find it infinitely more sinister than than what you get in a movie like Last House on the Left. And I know I'm making a lot of comparisons, but that's the best comparison for me. If you cannot sit through Last House on the Left, you will not make it through um, Night Train Murders. You just won't. The, you know, the subject matter is just as tough um, without the comical cops. You have none of that in this movie. And then when you expand that out, I think you have um, Franco Frabrizi, who is the, the kind of the voyeuristic older man on the train who gets suckered into this, who doesn't need that much persuasion to, to rape a, a virgin girl on the train, which is just horrendous. The whole scene is horrendous. Um, and it's tough subject matter to sit through. It's, it's a really, really unpleasant little movie which is shot beautifully, and I think that's what adds to it. I know I've said that already, but I genuinely, genuinely feel that way. Aldo Lado, I think, is a phenomenal director. He's one of these Italian directors that I feel gets shortchanged. It's because his career really took off just about the same time as Argento's, and Argento goes on to be this rock star. Um, and while Argento's been a rock star, you see the rise of people like Sergio Martino or Lucio Filci. You know, these big genre mainstays that Umberto Lenzi, who's like well into his career by this point, the Aldo Lado comes out and chips away and I think genuinely makes some incredible movies. It kind of feels like he gets the short end of the stick. Um, it's, it's worth saying that we will be looking at um, Lado's first movie, as part of this Italian collection, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Uh, number 21 on the list is his, uh, his his debut, which is a jelly known as Short Night of the Glass Dolls, which I genuinely think is one of the better jallies in the entire subgenre. And it's pretty incredible. One of the greatest what the fuck moments at an end of a movie I've ever seen. So we will be coming back to look at him. But he did that movie, went off and did, I think, like a sex comedy and a crime movie, and then comes back to horror to do Night Train Murders, and, and dear God, does he raise the bar just to a level which is, to me, almost unattainable in terms of the vile content. This movie was a video nasty, and I genuinely think when we talk about video nasties, it's possibly at the top. I, I like it's one of the most video nastiest nasty movies that ever ever video nasty the video nasties. Um, I think it's up there. I think it's maybe top five uh, video nasties in terms of content. Uh, if you've ever listened to doing the nasty, you hear me and Andy talk about this and how we just watched this movie and it just hit us in the face like a ton of bricks. It was the first time I'd watched the movie was for uh, that run of shows. I've seen it twice since, including once for this this particular recording. And I think it holds up. It looks great on Blu-ray. I'm glad it exists on Blu-ray. Um, the special features on the 88 films disc, I think, uh, are a bit light if you if you can if you're comparing it to some of the other companies, distributors that put out things. You do get a fantastic interview um, with Irene Miracle, uh, who's one of the girls who, um, well, she's the girl that throws herself from the train uh, to her death. And it's a pretty fantastic interview, actually. She talks about how she got into um, the Italian cinema scene, talks a bit about her career, particularly her involvement with this movie and how little she knew about the content of the movie before starring in it. She also goes on um, to talk about some of her other experiences with other directors who will be featured um, in these runs uh, of shows, no doubt. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool little feature, but that's all the feature bonuses you get out with trailers. So it's a bit light on bonus content. That being said, the movie itself being on Blu-ray, I think is pretty wonderful. You also, on this uh, particular Blu-ray, have the option of you know watching it in its original language which i am i am very much for that you know i i like watching um italian movies in their italian language with english subtitles um but you have the option of watching it in english as well if you want as we're saying a lot of these movies from the time are uh 
um, overdubbed, they're shot silent, and then the dubbing is done afterwards in, in post. So at that point, and you have a mixture of English and um, Italian speaking actors and actresses that watching either way doesn't necessarily <laughs> affect your overall viewing. Like the dubbing's still going to be off regardless if an English character speaking and Italian's coming out their mouth. So none of them are perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but that's just the... the we're going to be dealing with it a lot, ladies and gents, as we go through this, this series. It is a, a gnarly little movie. I think it really, really is this horrible, deviant piece of cinema, which is kind of phenomenal. You know, these movies can't be made now. That being said, I did see um, last year... Uh, a new movie which I thought was was pretty fucking amazing by Paul Verhoeven uh, called L, which has pretty graphic rape in that uh, and retaliation to an extent from from the character who's being raped. That you can still do them. I just don't think they are as gnarly as as the movies that were put out in the seventies, particularly in the sort of rape revenge subgenre where this kind of lies to an extent, but not really. Um. Yeah, it, it's a movie that that I think exists in the real world uh, in terms of just this this idea of human escalation and crimes and how people can, in certain situations, be geared or manipulated to do things out with their original intent. That being said, all three of the, the killers are horrible fucking characters. I think that's the ultimate gut punch at the end of the movie is the arguably the worst one out of the lot uh, can play the system in such a way that one, she's she's a woman uh, and two, she is she's clearly of money that um, when push comes to shove people will believe her over these two thug characters and she walks away scot-free which, you know is the moral of the story? I don't know, I don't know it's, it's just this wonderfully bleak, bleak movie which yeah, it sets the tone, ladies and gents, for for the journey we'll be taking. So, so yeah, that was um, a, a very quick overview of Night Train Murders, a.k.a. Ultimo Treno della Notte, a.k.a. Last Stop on the Night Train with another million names tagged on the back of it. Um, as it currently stands just now, you can pick up this movie for a steal. Um, I think Amazon have it for about £9. I think you can buy it directly off the 88 Films website for about eight quid. Um, and I'm fairly sure this exists somewhere out in the Americas and it's been out for a while again, so you probably will pick this one up. Fairly reasonable. It does exist online. I don't advocate going to places like YouTube, but you could check it out there. I say don't do that. I say buy the Blu-ray, sit down and watch it, bum yourself out for the rest of the week and then just realise that if you have a shitty job, it could be worse. You could be on the night train. If I had to grade this movie, uh, so we do Netflix grades, um, one through five, and we do it more on the, the kind of emotional feels of the movie, less on the technicalities and more how the movie makes you feel. One hated it, two didn't like it, three liked it, four really liked it and five loved it. This movie's a four. I'd be hard pressed to say I love this movie just because of the way it makes me feel. That being said, I really like what they do with it. I think it is a an incredibly powerful bit of cinema um, that's handled not in a way which feels cheap at all. It feels like it, you know there's real care and attention put into this movie. And a lot of the genre stuff, particularly from the 70s, fall into that category where there's far much, far more love given to these movies than necessarily they deserve. Um, but I can live with that and hopefully you can as well. So it gets a 4 out of 5 for me.